Yo, yo, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, world? This is I Am Poker here. Welcome to the I Am Poker show. Um, welcome back, I guess. Um, I started this um, show maybe about like a year ago. I did two episodes and then life kind of happened and, um, you know, I had to I guess take care of some things or whatnot, but um, I'm back, hopefully for good. Um, this is all new to me still. This whole show, podcast, YouTube thing is really outside of my um, my um, realm, element, or whatnot. Uh, I'm not really a person that shows my face a lot. I'm more I'm more so behind the scenes kind of guy, but. You know, as I get older, you know, I want to try some new things, see what my reach is, you know, just kind of just uh, test myself a little bit. So, um, this show is all about poker. Um, you know, we, we're just going to be talking about poker, basically. You know, I don't really have a, a real format for this thing. I'm kind of doing it off of the cuff, just being authentic and real, and just let you know. Uh, what the deal is basically so you know um that's basically it every episode will be an adventure i guess you can say because who knows where where the episodes may lead to when it comes to poker talk but hey i appreciate you tuning in i appreciate you listening to me and hopefully you'll find something in these um episodes that you can take back with you, maybe to help you with your poker game or just something that, you know, you can, I don't know, digest a little with. Once again, I'm just doing this off the cuff. So, in any case, um, let's get this show on the road because I am excited. Believe it or not, I'm very, very excited to get this episode going. Um... I've been waiting to do this for a minute now, so I'm glad to be doing it. So, let's get this episode going. So, first off, let me show you this. This is a package that I purchased. I've received it in the mail maybe about a day ago, I think. Um, The name of the people, I want to give a shout out to Poker and Chill. Make sure I got the name right. Look back in my notes here. Yes. Poker and Chill. Um, You can go on the website and check them out. Make sure I got the website right here. The website is pokerandchillapparel.com. Pokerandchillapparel.com. Um, hopefully, um, somewhere here... Um, I will have the website where you can actually just, just click on it from my uh, video. You just kind of click on the link and go to it. But shout out, shout out to Poker and Chill from New Jersey. Um, I believe that's, I believe that's where they're from. Um, they're basically a company that, um, sells merch, uh, um, uh, merch that's related to poker. Um, I came across them because I follow the owner, um, he goes by the name of, um, Rico. I follow him on IG, he followed me back, we chatted up, I checked out his site, love what I saw. I'm a person that, I love to get merch, especially if it's good merch with, with good quality, good creativity. I love stuff like that, especially from t-shirts and um, you know, um, any kind of accessories that, you know, that are used in a way that is creative and some that, you know, you'd be proud to have. So, um, shouts out once again to Poker and Chill, um, and, um, I will do my best to leave their, um, website on my page, on the YouTube page so that you can check them out. And see what they offer. So what I'm going to do is something that I've never done before. Um, I've had this package for about like a day now. I've been waiting for it. I finally got it. So 
I'm going to open it up right here f for you and whoever else that is watching. And uh, we're going to go on this journey together and see how to hook me up and see what the stuff looks like. All right. So got my scissors here. Kind of cut this bag open a little bit. So just be a little patient with me. We're going to get to the bottom of this, all right? Okay. All right. Bag is cut open. First thing I see is a hat. And I'm definitely liking the hat. It's a blue hat. Just what I ordered. Poker and chill. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. See how I look in this hat. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. We on to something here. Poke and chill. All right. Definitely like the hat. Appreciate the hat. Looks good. And it's in my favorite color, which is, which is blue. So anybody that knows me know I sport blue heavy. I rock blue heavy. Alright, so let's see what the next item is we got here. Hey, y'all let me know in the comments what y'all think of this stuff. Because uh, I'm digging it so far, at least with the hat. The next thing I have here is a pullover sweater here. Okay. Let me see if I can get this up to the camera so y'all can see this. Alright. Here we go. Let's see if I get a glance at it myself. Love it. And once again, this is in blue too as well. So that's what's up. I might even wear this to work tomorrow. It's supposed to be a little chilly. So this is good. I, I like this. Just the back of it. Go one more time in the front. Alright, we're two for two. Alright, I'm digging this. Hat some point. That's some point. Let's see what else we got going on here. Alright, got some shirts. Alright, the first shirt is a black shirt. Okay. Actually, one of these shirts they gave me free because I think that was an item I ordered and it didn't have the size or something. Um, I can't remember, but they ended up just giving me a free shirt as well as the other thing. So, this is a free shirt. It's black. What y'all think? Y'all, y'all rocking with that? Okay, I think that is the front, and then this is the back. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. So this is in black. And, um, let's go to the other shirt and this is it's the same shirt but this is in green this is the one I paid for as well and uh yeah I like it I saw Rico wearing it you know one of his um what you call it um advertisement so I was like man he looks good in that shirt I, th I think I like that I don't normally get stuff in green but um that you know how, how it looked on him and how he was rocking I was like you know what I think I'm gonna give this a try, so I definitely like that. So here, here's the shirt. The front, again, it's, it's in green. Here's the back. So yeah, so I have to say, poke and chill, y'all did your thing. 
Yeah, I did job thing. What is this? Alright, nothing important. Alright. Yeah, um, hey, I give it a thumbs up, poke and cheer. You guys did your thing. I appreciate that. Appreciate that bad boy a lot, man. Love the hat. Digging the hat. Think I'm gonna leave the hat on for the rest of the um, show. Um, take my sip of water here. That was nice. That was awesome. Um, that was exciting. Uh, I had been waiting almost. I could have been actually opened the package up, but I didn't because I wanted to do a special uh, thing where, I did, where since I'm coming back to my poker show, I wanted to do a special thing where I actually opened it up for the for my um, actual um, people, audience, so that I, I can share the experience with you guys. So thank you for joining me on that experience, and I hope you like the stuff that I got, and I hope that you... We'll go and check them out once again. Make sure I put this website up again. The ep the um, website is pokerandchillapparel.com. And hopefully, like I say, somewhere on my YouTube, I have the link there for you to just to click on it and go to them. But they got some good stuff. And if you like what you see there, go ahead and join them. And thank you um, once again, Poker and Chill. I really do appreciate it. Um, the, the clothes and stuff. Um, before I go further, if you're liking what you hear, if you end up loving what you hear and see, um, out of this, um, revamp version of the I Am Poker Show, please like the video. That's very important. The more likes that I can get, the better that it will help, um, my video be seen Give me more views, more subscribes, all that stuff. Uh, that would mean the world to me. So please like the video. Number two, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Once you subscribe, this next step is very, very, very important. Once you subscribe, click the notification button. But don't just stop there. Once you click the notification button, the word where it says all, hit that way hit that word once you do that they guarantee that you get all of my videos when they come out that's very 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 important i want you to get every content that i put out and the only way that you would do that and the only way that guarantees you do that that you would get that is if you click that notification button and click the word all very 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 important um if you are on um if you're watching this from my, um, excuse me, if you're watching this from Instagram, um, taking the same information, follow my YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube, like the channel, uh, excuse me, not like the channel, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button, and also all as well. Also, if you're on, if you're watching this from, um, Instagram, please also like the video from there as well. Leave comments. Once again, the more feedback, the more support that I can get by you doing that, the better um, this can go out to more people. And, you know, all the support is, all the support and love is greatly appreciated, okay? All right, now moving on. Um, there's been a topic... Um, if most of you people who follow poker and have, I'm sure you, you, unless you live, unless you've been living under some kind of a rock, has been a thing that's been going on. Um, a lady by the name of Robbie Jade Lou um, was in a situation. She was in a tournament, a um, cash game, I believe, um, with a guy that goes by the name of Garrett. Um, Elderstein, and I may be butchering the last name, but you guys know the name if you, if you've been following the, this story. Um, basically, they was on a live stream called the Hustler Casino Live, and um, basically, uh, Robbie Lou 
and the guy was in the, they was in the hand. Um, it went down to the river or the turn, I believe, the, the turn. She had jack four, I think. And um, let me go back in my notes and see what exactly did he have. I believe he had a 10-9, if I'm not mistaken. No, my bad, I'm sorry. He had a seven and eight of clubs, and she had a jack of clubs and four of hearts. So I did get her, her hand right. She, I said she had jack four, and that's what she had. And basically, um, during the turn, um, the guy put her all in. He was on a straight draw, and she just had jack four. And she called him um, thinking that she had a pair of threes because a three was on the board. And she thought she had jack three, but she really had jack four. And um, But she also thought that he was also bluffing as well, um, which he was because he didn't have nothing. I mean, he had a straight draw. And they um, so they um, went through... Going through the river twice to do that back to back thing, um, where they basically ran it twice, and um, both times she came out the winner, or both of both times, which means she won the money. So when that happened, he wasn't happy. He was stunned. If if you watch the video like I did, he was staring a hole in that woman. He was not happy, and he was shocked and. I mean, he, it, it was crazy. He was just visibly shocked at what happened. He couldn't believe it. He, so he basically gets up. Um, she gets up. Um, there's, you know, some kind of altercation where he's basically accusing her of cheating. And he won't. And she gives him the money back because she wants him to stay in the game. She doesn't want any trouble. And now there's controversy about well, why would she give him the money back? that she won when she was in the right and some people think that it makes her look guilty and it's been one thing after another um a lot of the stuff has came out about this his story i'm not gonna you know um give a i'm not gonna go too long i'm not gonna go long-winded at all on this thing my personal take um uh, in regards to her and cheating and him and whatnot is um, the guy, from my understanding, was a well-known poker player, well, a well-known um, poker pro. And I think, from my, from what I saw in the reaction, certain things that I've picked up on, I think that he wasn't expecting her to call. Um, and I think he thought, you know, I think he was shocked that she had the the balls to call. And yes, she did misread her hand from what it looks like to to me. But she also made a point to say that she thought that he was bluffing anyway, which in a way he was bluffing because he didn't necessarily have a hand. He was trying to get a hand, as far as I'm concerned. With he was trying to hit the straight, um, maybe even the flush, um, if there was a possibility of that. Well, he got neither when they ran it out twice. So, and even though she may have mistakenly read her hand, you know, she did also say that she thought that he was bluffing to begin with. And that's why she also called. Well, you know, hey, she called, she misread her hand, but she made a call. She had the better hand, even though it was a messed up hand or it wasn't the um, strongest hand that you would call anybody with, but she made a read. She slightly mis misread her cards, but she also had a feeling that he would that he didn't have nothing either, and he really didn't. And it just worked out in her favor. Um, I guess you know I I'm I'm a little bit shocked on how people are kind of, in my opinion, opinion it has overreacted her hand. Like it's the sickest call in history. It's the sickest call ever to make you know i mean i'm like this if you get a read on somebody and you think that you have them no matter what your hand is and if you make that call and you win 
it can look to the outside looking in or the people at the table. It can look like it's a ridiculous call and you're not supposed to make. But at the end of the day, you know, poker is not just about playing certain hands and playing them a certain way. Sometimes it's also about the, the feeling and the instinct that you get when you think you just have a better hand or that, or when you think you have somebody beat. In that situation, she felt like she had him beat. Even though her hand was misread slightly, she still, because she continually said that she thought that he was bluffing, that he didn't have anything, and he really didn't. And she got the better of him, even with her misreading her hand. So to me, that's, it's not, a, to me, it's not much of a big deal, the fact that she called with Jack Ford. She made a read that was slightly about her thinking she had a hand that she didn't have, but it was also about the fact that she thought that he didn't have nothing, period. And she and she made a point to also mention that. So, you know, that's my take on that. I just think that he was so flabbergasted by the fact that she would call him with that hand and it kind of it kind of bruised his ego, the fact that he's this you know, God, this, this, this made man in poker that is supposed to be really good and great at what he does, and then he gets called by somebody who is who is kind of new to the poker scene as far as being out in these events, especially the one that she was in that's a pretty high-profile event anyway. She's actually new at this, and she calls him and, you know, grabs a pretty nice, you know, um, a nice little sum of money out of it. And I just I just think his, his ego was, was, was a little bit bruised, and he didn't know how to take it. And instead of him just taking it like a man and just, you know, accepting the fact that she made a courageous call to a certain degree and she got the better of him, no, he pouts and... He gets upset, and now he accused of cheating, and now she's going to do all this stuff that I think is kind of un- unfair. I mean, yes, there's a lot of stuff that's been coming out about what, how she might have cheated, who she might have been in cahoots with to cheat, and all this stuff. But at the end of the day, to me, it's all circumstantial. It's nothing that's concrete. It's nothing that that you can really just say... It's factual. That's why there's an investigation going on, and I think people need to be really careful in how they're coming at this woman and accusing her and blatantly just doing third in her name because if this thing comes back that she's actually innocent and there's, you know, proof and evidence to, to back up that she's innocent and that she had nothing to do with the accusation that the guy who was a sore loser, you know what I'm saying, actually brought on her, Everybody is going to look like basically idiots, and they're going to have to apologize, or they should apologize to this woman, you know. So I understand poker is a game where it's very scrutinized because of cheating, because there are people that have actually cheated, been accused, and have actually done the crime. And, you know, poker is a big business. It's a very big, big business, and there's a lot of eyeballs on it, and there's a lot of people that really love this game and love and and uh, and are invested in this game and love to play it. And so, you know, that brings out a, a, a lot of scrutiny for people to come and try their way into cheating and, and 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 also trying to get the upper hand in the game, especially with technology being the way that it is now, where people are willing to try just about anything with technology to get ahead. So I get that, but I think that we should be very careful in throwing around the word cheat and being also very paranoid every time something happens that we think is so out of the ordinary and so strange that the first thing we do, we want to holler cheat. Just because somebody makes a hero call or a play that is on... Um, that is un, unlike anything that is normal. That doesn't mean that there's a cheating thing by, behind it. Maybe that person just made a great play that was better than your play. You know, maybe this person saw something that you didn't see and they got the best of you. Like, that's the game of poker. It happens. 
whether you're the greatest player on on God's green earth or you're the sorriest player. It doesn't matter. It happens. So that's my take on that as far as, you know, I'm concerned with that situation. So, um, yeah. So that's basically that. Um, last but not least, um, I want to speak to a lot of the poker players uh, players that and fans that have followed poker since the renaissance of poker with the poker boom back in 2002. I believe when Chris Moneymaker won the World Series of Poker. And from that day on, poker, poker has, you know, has saw uh, a giant leap of fans, um, What's the word I want to use? Um, popularity. You know, poker has really grown since then. And, you know, it to me, to me, it started with him. When he won that poker tournament, the World Series of Poker, which is the biggest poker tournament that you can win. It's like the Super Bowl of poker. When you win that and... You know, just his backstory on how on him even being able to be a part of that tournament and him winning the, the satellite and stuff like that to get in and then winning it, you know, it's nothing short of special and it's remarkable and it ended up giving a lot of peop a lot of people like myself hope that, you know, you can, you know, get into a tournament like that, however that you do get in. And that you have a chance, especially if you believe that you're a pretty good player like he was during that time in that year when he won. Um, but with that being said, as I said, poker has definitely grown. Poker is, you know, big business. A lot has changed for the better and for the worse. Um, my question that I want to ask you, and I hope that you can respond in the comment section, which I hope that you do, because I really do want to know your opinion on it. For people who've been following poker since then, what um, would be, what would you say is your outlook on poker now? Like, what do you say would be the biggest difference from poker back back in the day to poker poker now and just like what's your um overall view on poker now versus poker back then um mine's i'm trying i try to make it as short as possible mine's pretty much you know poker has definitely come a long way as i as i've been saying and i appreciate the game for what is for what it is and for what it's worth um you know um that they've made a lot of changes to the game to help enhance the game. And then some of it, you know, is very questionable. I do miss um, the, I miss the rawness of the game as far as uh, playing the game goes. I miss the authenticity, uh, authenticity um, the realness of the game, um, the the emotion of the game as well. You know, I, I just, I missed certain intangibles that I think sometimes the game is missing when players sit down and play because I think nowadays a lot of players are focused more so on um, doing everything uh, right as far as what, uh, what they call them, problem solvers, solvers, or whatever that you call them now, where a lot of players are using to enhance their game, to better their game, and they like um, pre-game, I can't think of the word I want to use, but they're basically things that help you, supposed to help better your poker play, they're like simulators or whatever they that you want to call it. But a lot of players are focused more so on playing a certain kind of way, and you know what I'm saying, rather than just playing the game. Just playing and following your um, gut, following your instincts, and just really just letting yourself go with the game. Um, I think 
that's something that is missing. Um, and listen, I'm not trying to down whatever technology that is out there to help you better your game. I mean, whatever that's gonna help you be a better player, fine, use it as long you know, obviously as long as it's legal, and it's you know something that is very harmless and it's gonna actually help. Cool. But, you know, I just remember the, the days when all this was not around and basically, you know, you just sit down and you just play. And you can tell that the energy and the environment was very different because back in the day when players played, they was able to really just have fun and be themselves and just take in the moment more and enjoy, you know, um enjoy the game more whether you know it, it it was serious and and it was competitive but it was also loose in a way where you know they just played you know they just played and it wasn't thinking to the point where we gotta make everything right we gotta do this according to what the solvers say and you know what the software says we have to do it was just a lot more authentic to the game of poker back then. Now I think, I do think that, you know, there's some realness and there's some rawness to a point, but not but not as much as it used to be. So I think for me, I think that's my biggest takeaway is that I miss that. Um, I'm a kind of player that I don't really use solvers and stuff like that. Um, I play, I guess you could say I'm kind of like an old school player to a certain degree. Um, but, you know, I do make sound the decisions at the table, and I do think things through to a point, and, you know, but at the same token, I don't, like, I don't really overthink things and overplay things, at least I try not to. And, you know, I definitely try to make sure that I have fun and enjoy myself because that also helps me as the game goes on, as the tournament goes on, to really just kind of like like in when I need to and also be free and relaxful when I need to at the table as well. So it's kind of like a fine balance. But um, let me know what you guys think in the comment section on the biggest differences on today's game of poker versus back in the day and, you know, um, what you think – is missing, what can be improved, all that stuff. Um, but I'm not going to hold you. I'm going to let you go. I want to thank you guys. If you have tuned in for the whole episode, thank you so much. I hope I haven't over-talked you. If I have, I'm sorry. I'm nervous. Um, I don't usually do stuff like this, but I'm getting back out there. I'm trying it again, and um, hopefully I'm with you for the long haul. Um, I love poker. I love what the game brings, I love the excitement, I love to play. Um, I'm learning to step out, out of my shell and do more stuff like this more, so just bear with me. But thank you for your support. Once again, if you are on Instagram and you're watching this video on there, please um, like the video, uh, give me a comment, and um, also follow me on IG at I am Poker eighty one. Once again, I'm on Instagram under I am Poker eighty one. Um, you can also follow me on there. Hit the notification button as well on there as well, and move the little circle bar to um, all of the notifications so that you can get each and every one of my notifications on IG. Also. If you are listening on the YouTube channel, which a majority of you probably are doing that, uh, please um, subscribe to my YouTube. Um, like my video right now or soon after the video is also done. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I really would appreciate that. More importantly, when you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button. And hit the word all, which guarantees that you get all my videos, which is very, 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 very important to me. Alright, and also if you're on Instagram, if you want to find my channel, 
The link is in my profile on my bio. Okay. Thank you guys. Uh, Shouts out again to Poker and Chill. Poker and Chill, thank you very much. Um, I should have a link somewhere on this page for you to click on so that you can check out their stuff. Please support them. I support them. I thank them. I salute them. I salute you guys. Until then, until the next episode, God bless. Take care. Thank you.